I'm Beverly Ward and this story is called One for the Road. Um, it's a story that I wrote last year for the Sheffield Authors Short Story Competition and it was shortlisted. She saw him through the window every day, watched the way he deftly clipped the pannier to his bike, the way he wheeled it through the gate and turned to close it behind him. He never looked up to see her seeing him. He never saw what she saw, the way his fringe fell over brown eyes, the strength in his forearms, the way he raised the red sports bottle to his lips, the way he wiped his chin. She'd been watching him for weeks now. Mostly when he wasn't working, he wore band t-shirts. Mostly she liked the bands he liked. She especially liked his Arctic Monkeys t-shirt. It was the one from the AM tour, the one she'd almost bought herself, though in the end she'd gone for a different style. He had good taste, a bit dated but good nevertheless and rooted in Sheffield like she was. He was the only man she ever saw who still wore a long pigs t-shirt. Not that she saw many men, of course. Just her brother Mike, who occasionally brought the kids on a Sunday, and Dr Francis, who came once a week for her therapy. Other than that, it was just the milkman and the postie, who sometimes delivered a parcel from her mum. It was because of the postman that she knew his name. When he'd first moved in two years ago, the postman had asked her if she knew where he lived. His name was Steve, Steve Riley. Professor Steve Riley. She liked his name. She'd lie in bed at night and roll that name around her mouth like a licorice all sort. Her favorite kind, the pink bobbly one with the dark center. Professor Steve Riley. She'd look him up on Google and read with deep fascination his paper on the revolutionary polemicists of Yorkshire. She'd looked him up on Facebook too, just to check his relationship status, though she knew there was no need. She already knew there was no Mrs. Riley. A few times she'd seen women come and go, but there was no one who came regularly, and she'd never seen anyone ushered out through the garden gate in the morning. No, Professor Steve Riley definitely lived alone. He might be an expert on historical descent, but Steve Riley wasn't one for online security, and his lack of Facebook privacy settings meant that she could learn a lot about him. His favourite smell was coconut, his favourite food, pizza, that he was probably a Viking warrior in a former life. He didn't post every day, but she liked what he saw. She appreciated his witty take on the daily news, his cute videos of pandas playing in the mud. She especially liked the way that he didn't use text speak or emojis, but worked hard to use language in a nuanced way. She'd always admired a wordsmith. In fact, she liked everything about him, not just the convenience of the fact that he lived next door, though obviously this had not escaped her. Of course, she thought again one Thursday morning, it would be ideal to love the man who lived next door. All she'd have to do was navigate the garden path and that little stretch of pavement out the front. She'd been to the garden gate three times now with Dr Francis. It would only take a few more steps and she'd be there. She could be ready in a few weeks, then she'd just need to manufacture an excuse to call. She was lost in reverie when there was a knock on the door. She looked out of the window, half hoping in her daydream that it might be him, but it was the postman with a parcel. She expected to see her mum's handwriting, but the parcel was addressed to another name. His name, Professor Steve Riley. Could you take this for your neighbour? asked the postman. Of course, she said, surprised to hear her own voice, amazed by her own temerity. That night, she washed her Arctic Monkeys t-shirt and bathed in coconut bath oil. She stood for a while in front of the mirror, repeating the mantra that Dr. Francis had taught her. And then, at exactly eight o'clock, she opened the door. Even though it was autumn, the night sky hit her with the force of a blast from a furnace. And she almost turned back, but she didn't. She couldn't. This was her chance. Instead, she strode down the path the way Dr. Francis had taught her, looking straight ahead as she tried to ignore the heart that was rattling like a bird in a cage, fighting to control her ragged breathing. And then, there she was. And there he was. They looked at each other in their AM t-shirts and a smile took over his usually serious face as his eyes went from her face to her chest and back again. And his t-shirt said those words, are you mine? And hers replied, I want to be yours. I, I live next door, she stuttered. I, I've got a parcel for you. She reached out to give it to him. Thanks, he said. For a moment their hands were connected by brown packaging. She didn't want to let go, though the horror of being outside was overpowering now and the panic was rising in her chest like the waters filling up the Titanic. Well, I just brought the parcel. I should go, she said, 
Though a hand was still holding her end of the package, though her feet were still standing there pointing to his door. You're a monkey's fan, he said. She nodded. In that case, he said, you should come in. It's a long way home, after all. One for the road. My favourite song, she said. Mine too, he said, stepping backwards and gesturing for her to enter the hall. She breathed deep. She was in.